All right, hello and welcome to another Expert Inside interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop, online sales magazine and Pipeliner CRM, joining you from a, I normally say sunny San Diego, but today I'm going to say a very, very rainy and wet San Diego, because I don't get to say that very often. And today I am delighted to be joined from Toronto in Canada by Paul Nadeau. How are you doing, Paul? I am doing great, John. So nice to be here with you, and I'm so here that you're getting rained on. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, we need it. Uh, they just have to figure out how to store the water because I guarantee you in a month they'll be calling it a drought. Right. Um, yeah. So um, Paul's a former police detective, hostage negotiator, international peacekeeper, and has spent more than 30 years working with victims of crime and perpetrators, learning from top experts in abuse situations, murder investigations, hostage taking, terrorist attacks, and human behavior in general. Your life was actually saved by a terrorist from a terror attack in the in the Middle East, which is which is a fascinating thing in itself, and helped you understand the importance of connecting to others without judgment, prejudice, so or fear, so that we can contribute to helping the world become a better and safer place. And now you help others, and you wrote the best selling acclaimed book, "Take Control of Your Life." Uh, which has helped hundreds of people. You're also the author of Damage Just Ask, a book on how to negotiate for what you want in business and life, and the Take Control of Your Life Companion Journal. And what we're going to talk about today is how to negotiate your way out of self-sabotage and how to remain positive during challenging times. And let's face it, Paul, we're in pretty challenging times. We've come through COVID, there's war now, there's economic downturn, people are... Fi and I think there's an academic, an academic, an epidemic of loneliness and isolation. So there's a lot of things going on. Uh, so first of all, uh, when you define what self-sabotage is, because I mean, I think a lot of people have heard the word and probably think they understand what it is, but, but can you just define self-sabotage from the get-go? Absolutely. Now, the, when we take the two words together, self-sabotage, let's just break it down to one word. Let's focus on the word sabotage. Sabotage, when you hear that word, it means to deliberately destroy, damage, or obstruct something. So when we are watching the news and we hear of an act of sabotage, we know that it was a deliberate act to damage, destroy, or obstruct something. Now, let's put the self in front of that word. So we are self-damaging, destroying, or obstructing something. We're damaging our thoughts by allowing certain, certain ideas or certain narratives to take control of our thoughts. The moment something comes in and we are aware of it, then if we continue to entertain the narrative, meaning for example, if I were to look at myself and, and uh, the words, you're never going to amount to anything, Paul. Nothing's ever going to happen. This year's going to suck. Well, if I entertain that without disputing it, if I allow that to take over my conscious mind, my subconscious mind, which is the worker, is going to obey the conscious mind. The more I entertain that thought, the subconscious mind is going to say, the boss has told us that we need to, that we're not going to amount to anything. So let's make sure that mm -hmm. that happens. And so the act of sabotage comes when we entertain the negative narrative of our minds without disputing it, without taking a moment and saying, no, that's not so. Uh, that, that that's fascinating. And I, and I guess a lot of the times is I, human nature being what it is, it's almost it's almost more comfortable for us to sometimes it's more comfortable or to wallow in that piece than to than to take it on right i mean there's a certain there's a certain there's a certain comfort in in just wallowing in that and staying in that state you know that well yes but i would dispute that because okay. you're right um it's it's called learned helplessness is that when we mm. get so comfortable with something that that makes us feel helpless. For example, uh, in my past, I was I, I was raised in a home where I had a very violent alcoholic father. He used to beat me. He used to beat my mom. He used to beat my brother. Um, I was always put down, but that was my norm. This is all mm -hmm. I knew, and I was stuck in that way of thinking. When we become so 
comfortable with bad situations without saying, wait a minute, wait a minute, this is not my life. I do not have to live in this environment. You're right. It's comfortable to stay there because that's what you know. Uh, but what we need to do in times like that is challenge the stance and say, no, I'm better than this. I can change my thought pattern and be more, uh, more upbeat and truly believe that I am grateful for so many things. And that becomes the pattern then. The more that we exercise something, if you're stuck in self-sabotage and you are so comfortable with it, you don't want to do the work, then you are failing yourself. Not only are you failing yourself, you're failing your success. But once you challenge that narrative and you say, no, I'm no longer going to be here, it's like going to the gym. You don't go to the gym mm -hmm. just once, lift up a couple of weights and think that you're going to have this amazing body. You need to continuously do it until it becomes a norm, a habit. So, for example, I'll give you something, John. When my negative voices, and that happens to everybody, it doesn't matter who you are, even Tony Robbins and the great th minds of the world still get attacked by these saboteurs that tell them certain things. The difference between, say, a Tony Robbins or even myself is that when we hear these little buggers come in to our heads, we dispute them. We say, no, you are no longer welcome here. Out you go, and we change the focus. We begin to focus on something positive. Now, for example, when my little voice comes in, and he sounds just like me, John. He sounds just <laughs> like me. I, I, I get it. You know, he sounds, hey, you know, he's in my voice. So I've got to say, I've given him a name. Uh, I've given him a name. I've given him the name of Bob. And mm. long story on this Bob who let me down, this kind of stuff. But I've given him this name of Bob. So when Bob drops in, I, I just take a moment and I take a deep breath and I say, you know what, Bob, I'm having a great time here. You're not welcome in my thoughts. Get the heck out. There's the door. <laughs> it's time for you to leave. <laughs> and that works by naming the voice, giving it a name other than yourself. You are not uh. falling into, hey, this is me. This is my thought. No, no, no. This is Bob trying to mess with you. This is Karen trying to mess with you. This is Sam trying to mess. This is John trying to mess with you. Whatever mm -hmm. it is. You know, yeah, that no, that that that's really fun. Thank you, and that's a fantastic tip for everybody out there. Because, because let's face it, Paul, we've developed you know these negative thoughts and negative stuff. We've developed them over a probably a long period of time, but we don't always realize that we have developed them, and we've in some ways uh, we've nurtured them without meaning to, right? So if you flip that over, if we can do that and develop that over time, then we can flip it and develop positive habits we certainly can and one of the keys and one of the wonderful ways of doing this is by surrounding yourself number one with positive people taking control of how your day begins or the things that you feed yourself for example if i'm going to feed myself a diet of fat foods just very mm. processed foods fat foods awful foods then what's my body going to do? It's going to react to these terrible foods and I'm going to gain weight. My health is going to go down. The same is true with your mental wellness. If you mm -hmm. surround yourself with negative people, you listen to the news all the time, which is usually whatever leads, uh, whatever bleeds leads, all these yep. negative things. Hey, the world is coming to an end. And you're watching this and you're going, yeah, the world is coming to an end. And you're thinking to yourself, this is... All this stuff is affecting my mental wellness. What, do, what must I do? I am frequency. I get to choose the frequency that I would like best for myself. I can turn the channel. I can turn the channel in my thoughts. I can go and I can just turn that little dial and say, nope. You go from negative to positive. You start to surround yourself with positive people. You start to watch inspirational videos or listen to inspirational podcasts, listen to your show, which is inspirational. You tune in what feeds you and what gives you the best possible energy 
because this is your life. You only get to live it once. Mm -hmm. And nobody knows how long that's going to be. So why not live it with the best frequency possible? That means, and I've got so many tips, starting your day off with intention. What do I mean by that? Mm -hmm. The moment you wake up, you take just a few moments to be grateful. I am so glad I'm here. I woke up. I had a good night's sleep. Or my, my thoughts are good. I am going to take on this day. I'm going to tell myself something positive. I'm going to look at myself in the mirror. I'm going to go, Paul, today is going to be amazing. And guess what, Paul? You are amazing. Mm -hmm. And once we start to develop these routines in the morning, this is not starting our day off by chance. This is mm -hmm. starting our day off by intention, by setting mm -hmm. five minutes of your time to clothe your inner mind uh, before you close your outer body. And it's just amazing what you can do in just a few moments. Yeah, I mean, I, I love that uh, because I, I've been saying for a while and I totally agree with you. It's like, I mean, you most normal people wouldn't start their day by having a breakfast of cake and ice cream, right? <laughs> um, but we'll, we start the day with social media, with news sites, whatever. And as you said, I mean, news is not designed to inform you anymore. It's just designed to provoke you. And it doesn't matter which end of the spectrum you're on. It's all the same. Uh and then obviously social media, then you get on first thing in the morning and I go, oh, look, Paul's posing next to a Lamborghini. Wow, he must be really rich and I suck. My life is... And it turns out that you're actually walking past one and you happen to take a photograph, but I've already ruined my day. Um, but to your, to your point, I really think that we live in such a distracted society and we're constantly fed with all these things that if we don't stop for a moment, we don't have a chance. Our whole day is already wrecked with all these thoughts. John, you, are, you hit the nail right on the head. There's so much outside influence telling us what we ought to do. The, the perfect ideal body, the perfect ideal income, the perfect ideal this. Well, guess what? They don't know you. The outside mm -hmm. world, and, and I love what you said about comparison. When you look at social media, you see Paul beside a Lamborghini. You say, he must be living a great life. Well, that Paul standing beside the Lamborghini may be in extreme debt and poverty, whatever. And you're right. He decided to, to stand beside a Lamborghini and go, hey, here I am. You know, <laughs> and, and everybody's going, wow, he must be so great. We compare ourselves to others. The only person that we ought to be comparing ourselves to, John, is who we were yesterday, who we were, yes. you know, five weeks ago. Are we better people? Have we developed? Have we grown? Are we happy? What are we doing to create our perfect world, our perfect life? What is it that I'm surrounding myself with? My beliefs, my goals, my abilities, my capabilities. People tend to not examine their full potential. They don't take risks. They don't, they don't step into the unknown knowing that the unknown can actually bring them so much success and happiness. It, it's, it's a very sad state when we are conditioned by the outside world as opposed to conditioning our inside world. Yeah, no, I, I, that, that's fantastic too. I love, I love that because yeah, it's, um, it's how we view ourselves. And it's like, as you said, even, even if you start to turn things around and you say, okay, I'm going to, I'm going to be more positive and I'm going to go for it. And I'm going to try these things. Next thing you have is obviously the imposter syndrome. And, and, and to be honest, I've, I've never met somebody who doesn't suffer from that in some degree or another, regardless of how, and people who would surprise you, regardless of how successful they are or appear to be the imposter syndrome. And that's another one to overcome. It is. And I'll, I'll tell you something about the imposter syndrome. And, and as you, you so nicely put it is that everybody suffers from it from time to time. I want to ask each and every one of your listeners and you, who deserves love or success more than you? Like I'm, I'm going to ask you right now. And for all the listeners, every one of you out there, I'm asking you this question. I want you to take a moment. Who deserves love more than you? Nobody. Who deserves Nobody. success? Nobody. Who deserves happiness more than you? Nobody. Everybody was created equal with every opportunity available to them. Yes, some people were not born in the most ideal of circumstances, but we were given choice. The, that six-letter word, C-H-O-I-C-E. We, we were given this, this ability 
to really come into the greatest self that we possibly can. When we examine the life of very successful people, we see that many of them have gone through their struggles. They've gone through everything. They had their doubts. They wondered whether or not they deserved to be there, but they overcame that, that imposter syndrome saying, I do, I do. I am worthy, I am capable, I am as worthy as anyone else. We go from the I think to I am. I can be, no, you, you, you can be successful, turn that around to I am successful, and then do whatever it takes to create the success that you want. And this really is conditioning the mind, again, taking the narrative and just changing some of the some of the ways the words are placed. I am beautiful. I am capable. I am worthy. So you get into a job and the job is brand new and you're thinking, what am I doing here? I'm a businessman. I'm an <laughs> entrepreneur. What am I doing? I don't know. My goodness. And then you say to yourself, well, wait a minute, wait a minute. Everybody started somewhere. Yep. The journey of a thousand miles begins with a single step. The idea is that we mm -hmm. keep on moving forward. Yeah, no, absolutely, absolutely. And, and I think uh, we can all relate to that experience of starting on a job on day one that you're super qualified for and you're really pumped up about. It, and then you get there and you go, oh, <laughs> what next? Um, but, uh, but I love that too about the part that you just referenced a, a few moments ago, uh, ago about when we start to, regardless of our circumstance, but when we start to take personal accountability, right, for our circumstances. Now, that doesn't mean I'm, you know, I'm to blame for all of it, but if I take responsibility in how I reacted to it or whether I left myself in that situation or extracted myself or did something different, that's extremely liberating when you start to take, when you start to realize your life is your own, for a better word, your life is your own fault. Yeah, I love, uh, you're, you're absolutely right. Your life is your own fault. Your mental wellness is your own responsibility. Nobody's mm -hmm. going to pull you out of depression. Nobody's going to throw you, a, they're going to throw you a lifeline, but it's up to you to grab that lifeline and pull yourself in. You are the creator of your own book. Uh, I wrote a couple of books and I know that one chapter leads into another chapter leads into mm -hmm. another. The world is going to happen. Everybody experiences adversities and setbacks, but some people just write a different a different chapter for whatever they face. They choose not to allow their circumstances to define them. They define their circumstances. When we think of this brand new year, a lot of people wait for New Year's resolutions. I don't. I don't. I, mm -hmm. I, when I decide to make a positive change in my life, it could come in September, could come whenever the thought or a conversation with John or whoever came and, oh, I should be doing that. I do it right away. Self-improvement is something that is our responsibility, as is our mental wellness. Now, taking the, the idea of the book, you get to write the next chapter. You get to write the hero of your story. The hero of your story ought to be you, and you ought to write yourself into the story in the best light. And this may require some self-examination. Socrates uh, the great philosopher Socrates once said, an unexamined life is a life not worth living. Mm -hmm. And th there's a whole history behind him saying that. But the idea here is for us to take a look at some of the things in the past where we may have thought that we failed or we may have thought that we could have done better and to look upon it not as failure, but look upon it as data. That's yeah. information. I yeah, I could have been better and I will be better. I am better. And when I look at some of the things that I've done in the past, some of the so-called failures, I think, hey, I could have done things different and I will. I've learned from that experience. This is all data. It's not failure. It's data. If something's not working, change. Change the thought. Change the direction. If your business is not working, you take a look at it, you examine it, and you say, what must I do to get myself to the next level and then do the work? It's not going to be done for yeah. you. You got to do the work. And I love what you said about, yeah, it's your responsibility. And perfect, John. And and the other thing, uh, Paul, that I always find is sometimes like people will, you know, say somebody listens to this and says, oh, yeah, it all sounds great, but I don't think I can. You know, I, I, I'm, my life is in such a state right now. I don't think I can overcome it. And I always think, okay, just take a look back 
Take a look back at your life. And I guarantee when you look back, you will be surprised at the things you have overcome, the resilience you have. And then when you relook at the issue in front of you, you say, my goodness, I overcame way harder things in the past or I've overcome things. I can do it. Oh, John, uh, you uh, that is so beautiful because you're absolutely right. This too shall pass. And to to do the exercise that you spoke of, to take a look at some of the things, and I, I don't believe in dwelling on the past. I don't. Sure. I believe mm -hmm. in examining the past for the lessons to learn. You know, uh, uh, we all go through stuff, and we know that. But when you take a look at something, you say, hey, you know what? I got through that. Now, when uh, again, let's look at the narrative, because you so nicely put it that a lot of people will look at it and say, I don't think I can, as opposed to I can. They take mm -hmm. the don't think, just remove that. I can, I will, I am, as opposed to I don't think I can. The moment you say, I don't think I can do this. Again, the conscious mind, if you, if you take a look at the conscious mind and unconscious mind, uh, our unconscious mind does most of the work. Uh, our conscious mind are our thoughts and, and what we entertain. If the conscious mind could be looked upon as a captain, the captain of a ship. So your conscious mind is the captain. Your unconscious mind are all the captain's crew, everyone mm -hmm. working for the captain. And guess what? On this ship, nobody goes against the captain's orders. If the captain says, I don't think I can do this, the captain is throwing a, a command to all those mm -hmm. minions in the background doing the work saying, Captain says, we can't do this. We can't do this. And they will do whatever it is to keep you down in a state of I can't do it. The moment the captain says, I can do this, his crew or her crew turns around and says, Captain says we can and we're going to do it. And they find ways of doing it. Change the narrative. And also, here's something. And John, I know that you're going to appreciate this. We are energy. Each and every one mm -hmm. of us are energy. We transmit these vibrations to the world. Um, this, this is something that, that we have within each of us. We're energy. So if, if my waves are low, if I think of myself as, as transmitting low waves, uh, then I am going to attract low wave people into my life, mm -hmm. low wave jobs, low wave. This, this energy that I'm sending out is low. A lot of people say, yeah. you know what? I always attract cheaters into my life. Every one of the guys that I've, or the girls, they're all cheaters. Then that's the frequency that you're sending out is a low frequency. Who do you think you're going to attract on that frequency? You're going to attract a cheater. And if yeah. you, if your energy is like, oh, I'm going to a party, nobody's going to like me. And I, I'm <laughs> always, I'm always neglected. Nobody ever sees me. You're going to walk in, your shoulders are going to be slumped down. Your, your, brain that that captain has already told everyone <laughs> working for the captain let's keep him down let's keep her yeah. down you know they're not going to attract anyone so we're sending out this low frequency the moment you change your frequency the moment you change your vibration you start to believe in yourself you start to say you know what i've got this i'm gonna walk in head up shoulders back i'm walking in i've got this then your energy level that frequency just raises up here the moment you walk in People turn around and they feel the energy that you're sending out and they are attracted by positive energy. And people who will be drawn to you are who? People on the same energy mm -hmm. level as you. So if you went from, I always attract cheaters to, I attract wonderful people, wonderful men, wonderful women into my life. Then those wonderful men, wonderful women are going to say, hey, wait a minute, there's an energy in this room. I like, whoa, there it is. And they are attracted to it. So change your frequency. You change your world. You really do. Yeah. No, I 100% I, I agree with that. And I think that's probably just the last thing that we touch on. I think that's probably one of the, the hardest things that people have to face when they go through a journey of self-awareness or, or uh, you know, taking a more positive approach is the examination of the people around you. Because I always find it fascinating. It's like, you know, they'll say, oh, you know, my friend, but she always like puts me down. Or he always puts me down. He always does this or he's negative. And you always have to ask the question then, it's not their fault. They're serving a purpose for you. What purpose are they serving for you? Uh, so it's you. It's not them. It's actually you. 
It really is. And here's the importance of self-examination again. And I, I encourage this. I write about this in my book is that it, for all of you out there, if your life is going in one direction and you're not happy, or even if you are happy with it, do this exercise. Once every couple of weeks, take about uh, half an hour and just take a, a blank sheet of paper, do it on your computer, whatever, and, and divide the sheet into two columns. On the one side, the column will be things that are not going well. And on the other one, things that are going well. And then really, truly take a look and be so um, honest with yourself, brutally honest with yourself. My relationship with X is not going well. And then you, my job is not going well. What's going well? My health is going well. My this is going well. So you take a look. Now on the column, of things that are not going well, this is where you examine it. Is this relationship truly serving me? Am I doing my very best to make this relationship work? Do I want it in my life? And if I do, and it's not going well, what must I do? Who must I become to make this work? Must I go and ask for forgiveness? Must I contact this person more often? What will I do? And what am I prepared to do? And then do it. And if this person, as you said, you're surrounding yourself with idiots, surrounded by idiots, yeah, likely you're an idiot too, or you're <laughs> thinking on the idiot level. And if you don't yeah. want to remain in the idiot level, along with the, you know, the cluster of idiots around you, you need to cut them out of your life. And then you need to yeah. look for a new tribe that will support you and will even be more, you know, maybe more energetic than you, more intelligent than you, so that you can rise mm -hmm. up and be part of the tribe, man. Oh, and then that. on the things that are going well, you celebrate, you go, yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I love that. And I love that. I love that uh, exercise. I really encourage people to do it. And yeah, find your, find your tribe that raises you up, find your tribe that forces you to go, you know, drives you to get better, as you say, like sur surround yourself with, with impressive people. Um, listen, Paul, this has been fantastic. And all of Paul's information is going to be below this video. But before we go, please do tell people a little bit more about yourself and what you do. Oh, yes. Uh, thank you, John. Um, I, uh, I alluded to the fact that I was raised by a very uh, violent alcoholic father. Uh, but I discovered very early on in my life that uh, things don't only happen to you, they happen for you. And when I take a look back at my background and, and all of the things that I've gone through, I realized that I had a choice. And because of those things, I became a police officer to serve and protect and to help people uh, who were and found themselves in circumstances like that. So not all bad things happen to you. Oftentimes they happen for you. At the age of seven, after a beating that I suffered at the hands of my father, I remember looking up at him and saying to myself, when I grow up, I'm going to be a policeman so I can arrest people like you. Now, my father wow. killed himself when I was 17, so I never got to arrest him, but I became that police officer. And a little bit about my background, I served and protected. I became a hostage negotiator, became the international peacekeeper. I decided to write books. I decided to, there's nothing that I can't do. And it was a pivotal moment in my life in which I started to believe in myself because I suffered from self-sabotage so severely, no belief in myself, abused at home. My teachers were even telling me I wasn't going to amount to anything. Then mm -hmm. one little incident, and I won't go into it because we don't have the time, but one incident in grade seven changed all that. When I started to believe in myself and started to believe that I was limitless, then I started to behave limitlessly. And I started to can I write a book? I don't know how to write a book. Well, I picked up a book on how to write a book and I started to write. I, I tried something new. I take these risks. I'm, what's coming up? Public speaking. Well, I've never done it before. Jump <laughs> into it. See what it's like. You know, it, whatever you are desiring, you've got to want it bad enough. And a lot of people mm -hmm. don't want it bad enough. I want to learn how to play the guitar. Well, I'll tell you something. I've got a guitar in my home here that's collected dust for 20 years. I yeah. don't want it bad enough. If yeah. I did, I would take the time to do it and I would learn how to do it and I would love it. Take risks, folks. Um, I'm an author now. I'm a screenwriter now. Uh, I'm a, a speaker now. I, I speak all over the world. And there's always new adventures coming up and new opportunities and I'm creating them where none are there in my presence. I'm saying, 
I want to do this and I go for it. You can too. Each and every one of you have the ability to be the best version of yourselves and just go on out there and don't let anyone or anything or that little self-sabotaging voice tell you otherwise. You tell yourself you can and you will. Yeah, absolutely. We live in a world of abundance. Once you start to believe that, uh, it doesn't matter what the circumstances are. There's plenty there for everybody if, you, if you're willing to, willing to go get it. You're right. So listen, There's 1% of the people out there who are living that multi-billion dollar life and they are the ones who discovered the secret. And the secret is this. You can. Yeah, absolutely. It. Love it, Paul. Listen, Paul, this has been fantastic. Thank you all for watching and listening. And I will see you all again soon. Thank you. Yeah.